from Miami Beach, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Acronis Global Cyber Summit 2019. Brought to you by Acronis. Okay, hey, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage, everyone. Two days here in Miami Beach at the Fountain Blue Hotel for Cronus Cyber, Global Cyber Summit 2019. I'm John Furrier. Our next guest, Phil Shee, founder of Structured Research, to an industry analyst firm, doing analysis of what's going on here. And the big story is cyber protect as a category emerging from data protection, but a lot of infrastructure going on underneath. Phil, thanks for coming on, appreciate Great. it. Thanks for having me. So they got this platform, but underneath the platform they got a hyper-converged stack, a lot of storage, a lot of networking involved, abstraction layer, platform layer to enable sets of services, ISVs, whatnot. Um, pretty compelling. And you're seeing with cloud computing, cloud 2.0, modernization, these kind of white spaces can become categories. So I'm, I kind of like this cyber protection angle. We'll see how it kind of develops, but you got to make it work under the hood. What's your take of uh, their infrastructure, the platform, what's underneath, what's, what's going on there in your opinion? Yeah, I mean, I, I look at the world from the angle of service providers or infrastructure service providers. Uh, they come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, typically, the crowd here is probably what most would classify as small to mid-size. Uh, those kind of organizations are typically challenged when it comes to resources. You know, they have uh, you know smaller staffs, you know, less resources yeah. to acquire development talent, and so when it comes to approaching you know, innovative products and services to drive their business, you know, they yeah. often have to look to a third party like Cronus. Talk about, yeah. Phil, talk about so the, the evolution of mm -hmm. service providers, because the definitions mm -hmm. change over the you know, decades, right? I mean, Cisco yeah. service, target service providers, what does that mean in mm -hmm. telco? So what's a, mm -hmm. you know, MSP, managed service mm -hmm. providers? So the word service provider is kind of evolving mm -hmm. as these platforms start to become more prevalent. How do you, yeah. how do you, how do you shape the market? How would you talk about the, evolution of what a service provider is. Yeah, I mean, I like to think of it as infrastructure provide, infrastructure service providers. So those that are you know, managing third party infrastructure that lives uh, typically in some kind of off-premise, not on-premise environment. Uh, that's certainly a, a big chunk of the, the audience here. Uh, and those people will run data centers or they'll run multiple data centers. They might run some of their own data centers and they might run some stuff on the public cloud. Uh, and then they manage that for an end user, which could be a small business, mid-sized enterprise, uh, or a large enterprise. What are the top so, stories in that market dynamic that you're seeing involve? Is it IoT? Is it the, the SLAs that are required for latency? What are some of the dynamics going on in, yeah. in, the, uh, in that service provider market? I mean, I think the, the big thing today is to boil it all down is the impact of hyperscale and what that does to the market that these service providers play in. So you have hyperscale just you know, grabbing huge chunks of the infrastructure and IT real estate out there. And how that affects MSPs or service providers is that, hey, there's probably a little less market than you would have liked pre-hyperscale. And so what that forces them to do is to do two things, I think, uh, which is specialized focus mm -hmm. uh, and try to drive value from the infrastructure you do get to host uh, or manage or run on, on the public cloud. So that brings the punchline here to be, you know, it's all about value add. What is the value add? Well, you know, this is how kind of a Cronus came there. They understood that, you know, organizations that are a little more specialized like to work with service providers. They need to back up infrastructure. They have security requirements, they have compliance requirements, and then uh, they have to deliver that to the customer. Yeah. Uh, and being able to do all that is sometimes can be difficult, but if you work with a third party like Acronis, what they've done is you know, package that for you, hence the cyber platform, uh, and so that people can basically you know, turn the key and be able to deliver those kind of services and get back to focusing on what they're good at, managing customers, you know, and dealing with them. What's been the reaction, in your opinion, on what's happened with the, the Cronus value proposition? Because, again, like you said, these, they want to differentiate, add services to it, mm -hmm. around it. Seems like a good opportunity. Is it resonating well with, um, Infrastructure service providers? No, no, I think so because of where, as I mentioned, where we are in the marketplace. You know, hyperscale is maybe 10, the public cloud maybe 10, 12 years old. Uh, and you know, it took some time for, you know, to MSPs to really feel it. Uh, and now they're reacting, right? The market is changing, mm -hmm. customer requirements are becoming more sophisticated, 
and they're saying, hey, listen, we've got to get out there and do something. So absolutely, anything yeah. that drives value add on top of, yeah. let's call it plain, commodity. Com I don't want to use that word, <laughs> yeah, but like plain vanilla infrastructure. <laughs> That's uh, a better or raw way. infrastructure. Uh, yeah, anything about value yeah. add. I mean, we saw the global service providers like Accenture and these guys doing the same thing because mm -hmm. you know, their days were numbered on the consultant and they're building their own sets of services. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't they? I mean, it's a whole nother cloud expansion opportunity for people with exper expertise. Why wouldn't they want to increase their gross profits and deliver services mm -hmm. on top of something like this? So, so I got to ask you um, on, the, on the research section, how big yeah. is the TAM in, your, in this market um, that, that's in there? I mean, what's the, what's the size? Is mm -hmm. it changing, is it shifting, or is it more the same? No, it's definitely, I, I like to think of you know, the world, like, there's many ways to look at it. Uh, you know, some people throw around the word, uh, sorry, the number $1 trillion in IT spending. Um, but what I like to do is look at, at least for a lot of the guys here, what they're doing is they're managing infrastructure or hosting infrastructure on a third party basis and that means the customer, the end user, letting go, not running it themselves in house, in server closets, in their own IT, their own data centers. Yeah. Uh, and in terms of going from that model, which is a traditional model, to outsourced infrastructure and all its flavors, you know, we're still not, you know, we use the baseball analogy, uh, you know, we're not, we used to say that we're in the first or second inning. We're further along now, but we definitely haven't hit the seventh inning stretch. So no, we're middle you know, innings. We're like middle innings of this game. I, I would argue yeah. maybe only the third or fourth inning. Yeah. Um, and not only that, but if you think, so you can think of that as, hey, if you put a number on the total value and we're only 30% of the way there, there's still all that addressable market left. But you also have to think about all the new workloads, content, applications that are being built and created. They are invariably moving to either the public cloud or something that an MSP or a third party yeah. third party provider would touch. So what, it's a big market. Yeah, it's yeah. a big market and 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 this channel businesses are very efficient. I was talking earlier mm -hmm. with, with the sales guys here who runs growth. It's like they don't mess around. Like they're pretty efficient. If it works, they take it and they run with it. If it doesn't, this feedback comes back pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I can see MSPs liking this kind of approach. Mm -hmm. The question that I have is, is that, you know, they're adding here at this show, one of the top stories is they're opening up APIs, they're mm -hmm. doing some developer action. The question is, does that developer action translate down into like say storage and these other areas? What's your take on the ecosystem and developer specifically opportunity? Because the ecosystem's been nice to Acronis. They have mm -hmm. some success there. Mm -hmm. Now they have a developer piece to it. Yeah. What's your assessment of that developer angle? No, absolutely, it's important uh, because they need everybody to get together. Uh, they need the ecosystem to come together to try to innovate. Uh, if you're looking at, if you're managing infrastructure, you're competing against some pretty innovative platforms and, and we know the names of those. Uh, and the resources they can put at, they can throw at that are just, they're, they're unbelievable. So smaller providers, have to team up, they have to work together, they have to work in an ecosystem, they have to encourage each other, and what Acronis I think is doing a great job of is creating a venue and a platform for them to say, hey, hey you guys, you can be part of this channel, yeah. you can also work, we're going to open up our platform so that you can innovate and build cool tools that we haven't you know, thought of, of building, uh, yeah. that are specific maybe to your use case, and maybe another yeah. provider uh, can use them as well. Platforms are hard to figure out, and hard to, easy to say, hard to do, mm -hmm. but I think one of the validations that I always look for for platforms is, is there an enabling technology angle? Is there a disruptive enable that's going to create some enablement? And then true, what's the valuation, val validation from the ecosystem? Mm -hmm. So I can talk platform, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like the dance floor. How many people are on the dance floor? Mm -hmm. You know if the music's good. Here, mm -hmm. the platform's good, the ecosystem mm -hmm. rises up and you can see it. So uh, absolutely. Yeah. That's a key thing. Phil, take a minute to talk about the structure research. Okay. What are you guys doing? What's your, what's your focus? Um, mm -hmm. How long have you been doing it? And what do you see evolving? Give a quick plug for what you're working on. Yeah, we're an eight-year-old firm. Uh, we were founded in 2012. Uh, we're based in Toronto. Uh, we describe ourselves as a smaller focused uh, boutique research firm. Uh, so we cover, uh, we don't cover multiple sectors, we cover infrastructure services, what some people call internet infrastructure. Uh, but we live and breathe uh, on a daily basis the life of the service provider. And that service provider could be one, you know, a 10-man shop that's walking around here, there are many of those, yeah. all the way up to, to a rack space, uh, yeah. to uh, the hyperscale clouds, as well as the underlying data center infrastructure, uh, encompassing real estate, Facilities. So you guys are laser yeah. focused. Absolutely, service providers is what we're all about. <laughs> uh, you know, we're a six-man analyst team, so yeah, uh, we only have time to focus on this. And yeah. what we do is, what we've taken with it is, try to take a, 
a global approach to it. So we're, we're based yeah. in North America, uh, but we, all, we, we do a lot of research in foreign. It just feels to me, I mean, I'm not in the, in the, in the weeds as details as you guys are, because you're mm -hmm. laser focused on it, but Dave Vellante and I always talk on theCUBE about how the rich are getting richer, the bigger getting bigger. Mm -hmm. And it's really been sucking in the, like that tidal waves, of the mm -hmm. beach wave comes out, and then there's a tsunami of, of the, the hyperscale is dominating. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting that with the IoT opportunity, you're starting to see, and with machine learning and AI kind of really out front, mm -hmm. you're seeing a renaissance of what I call domain-specific apps and mm -hmm. services. Mm -hmm. And we think that this is going to create a massive innovation around what I call tier 1B or 2 clouds. Why not mm -hmm. build on Google, Amazon, or Azure and create a mm -hmm. unique service provider model mm -hmm. for something that's very domain-specific? I mean, yeah. that seems like a great business opportunity. No, Why? I think that's been a, I mean, it's been a part of the space and I think it more so, we're headed there faster. And, and you know, to your earlier question, I, you know, where the impact of hyperscale cloud, how it's taken out certain parts of the, more commodity parts of the business, and then it's driven service providers to go to pockets of value. You know, we did a panel earlier on, you know, that featured four service providers that had decided to take a vertically focused strategy. So get into areas where there's specific expertise with certain platforms or certain software packages, uh, you know, targeted, that, and then the kind of customers that use those have specific security and compliance requirements, certain backup and DR requirements that obviously Acronis is more than happy to enable, and then these service providers deliver that. So yeah, you'll absolutely could see, you know, and you see more people popping see, up. Yeah, doing kind of have an entire business focused on yeah. just serving the specific requirements on financial services uh, for even the dental sector. <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah, and, and they can run on, on private infrastructure, but they also can run on the public cloud. And there's a lot of marketplaces popping up too. I had Ingram mm -hmm. Micro on, yeah. Amazon's got a marketplace, Google's going to have one, they ever going to have these marketplaces for their clouds. How does multi-cloud fit into your world? First of all, I think multi-cloud mm -hmm. is just BS, me personally, but I think <laughs> everyone has multiple cloud providers. If you've upgraded with Office 365, you technically have Azure. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that you're using Azure. That's mm -hmm. like, but you might have Amazon and Google. But mm -hmm. you know, people might have multiple clouds, but hybrid seems to be the operating model. How does hybrid and this hype around multi-cloud impact your research area in, in, in any way or? Yeah, way? absolutely. I, I mean, you know, we, we care about how people deploy their infrastructure and we closely track how you know, uh, the way they do it and how those patterns change. You know, I would say, I would slightly disagree. I, I think multi-cloud is starting, I, I would probably agree that it's it's not Hyped very up. pervasive. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not it's not very pervasive, but it is a model we've tracked, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. end users we've seen uh, have definitely, you know, taken a liking to that, or at least are putting that on the roadmap and saying, hey, listen, you know, yeah. if we're going to build, you know, most of the architectures that are being built are hybrid, uh, but how, in what, I think the question is, in what way or how are they yeah, hybrid? Yeah. Does that mean I'm running exclusively on the public cloud and running on AWS and you know Google for other stuff? Am I yeah. running private infrastructure on premise and then in a private cloud and on backing that up to say the public yeah. cloud? Yeah. There's so many different ways to do it. So you know, it's interesting, yeah. Phil. You bring up, first of all, I agree. Well, we can debate. Love to have debates, but to me, I think um, you're right. I look at multi-cloud in terms of the hype. And, you know, mm -hmm. hype is good, but you've always got to be careful of it, not to be over, you know, overplay their card on that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I would see that multi-cloud basically to me is multi-vendor. I got mm -hmm. Microsoft, I got... <laughs> so, so as that shakes out, that's going to be an operational dynamic. And I think that's going to be interesting to see how mm -hmm. a company will operationalize their tech stacks mm -hmm. to deal with the multi-vendor or multi-cloud case because mm -hmm. the workload shouldn't care, ideally. If it's mm -hmm. true multi-cloud, mm -hmm. and I'm a workload, mm -hmm. I mean, it just should run, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, <laughs> I haven't seen a yeah. lot of that across multiple clouds. I mean, some people have use case analytics, I get that, but like, mm -hmm. running a workload on any cloud? Mm -hmm. yeah. Probably not there yet. Not there yet. <laughs> yeah. All right, what's the coolest, coolest thing that you're covering right now that you think is important for folks to know that, that in your space, what's the top burning issues of your sector? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that, you know, just the global build out of the cloud, uh, the hyperscale clouds, you know, that short list of very big platforms is going, you know, global at a rapid speed. 
uh, and also just the pace at which they are expanding is just incredible. And that's not just the, the infrastructure, but also just the product and service development. Just the tool sets have gone from you know, dozens to hundreds to probably thousands, you know, as we're speaking right now. Uh, just the pace at which this is growing is just, you know, no, it's, it's hard pretty to tough to comprehend, of. and it's tough to comprehend because not that long ago we were debating, you know, what is the cloud or yeah, Fast I'm running a, yeah, I'm yeah, running like, a few things on the cloud. But now people are making much bigger bets. Uh, be, there are businesses now out there that you use on your phone yeah. that are run completely on the cloud. I mean, that's that's big. And I mean, yeah. just go back with the queue's been around for ten years, riding this wave and covering mm -hmm. it. Remember OpenStack? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's but not all open yeah. anymore. But the, just the hyperscaler just blew that away. Just and yeah. then it found its place. Yeah, and it, it, it's just crazy. Great time. Yeah, and Great and time. I think it's 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 the, the you're right. The, the the pace at which things are changing is incredible. Yeah. I mean, we're the other thing. You know, to answer your, my second part to, to the to the question was not only is, you know we're following the global build up, but at the same time almost kind of paradoxically, we're talking now, and I think it's a really exciting part of our research is, is the edge. So the decentralization, you know, everything is building out really rapidly into the, and you know, compute is, and IT infrastructure is consolidated around centralized locations. You know, but now how do we hit mobile eyeballs or eyeballs in kind of more distant locations? And so yeah. just edge infrastructure or the decentralization, uh, is, a, is something we're really you. excited I think, about. I think Edge yeah. is a beautiful thing. It's going to open up. And by the way, we were talking last night, funny the sales guys here, mm -hmm. always like to debate them. Their Edge is a box, but there's the deeper mm -hmm. Edge. There's almost a deep Edge or an mm -hmm. outer Edge, right? Mm -hmm. There's humans, right? So there's Edge, Edge. Mm -hmm. So it's just so many surface points now. It's just an yeah. architectural I mean, challenge. Yeah, there's Edge on a, kind of like on a geographic basis, and then there's Edge, you know, how close to the user's device can you get? And that device may not be static. <laughs> right, like they'll be moving around, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, Phil, thanks for the great insight. Founder of Structured Research. Is there a URL for your site? Yeah, structuredresearch.net. Structuredresearch.net. Check it out. Hyper focused on service providers and infrastructure. Super important area as the clouds continue to grow, as hybrid multi cloud. Certainly, IoT is going, industrial IoT, from national security and physical security to you know, digital security, all big part of it. Data is, is going to be there. Storage and compute. Phil, thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. All right, it. thanks Keep for having coverage me. here in Miami Beach. I'm John Furrier, back with more coverage after this short break. Stop.